Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Gallagher, Muddy Outdoors, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester Ammunition, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Derby City Turkey Calls, Ansman, and Antler Dirt. Test one, two, three, four. Test one, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. May 9th, Monday, to proving grounds, and turkey season closed in Missouri statewide yesterday. This is a great time to reflect and learn for next year's turkey hunting. Now, I realize some of you guys and gals up in the northern states are still in turkey season. You guys way down southeast have put your guns up and oiled them a couple of weeks ago. But still time for us all to get together and learn, and I've reflected on five or six major points about my turkey season that will help me be a better turkey hunter and turkey manager in the next year. I didn't experience any classical turkey hunts where the turkey's roosted, we call, it comes off the roost, struts into view, and someone sees it or harvests it. And one reason is, throughout much of the Midwest, there's been very low success in nesting and poach survival last couple years. Now this is due to a lot of rain during the the nesting period of time and really elevated levels of predators throughout the turkey's range. And when you have that, you don't have those classical two-year-old birds, those younger birds that are real aggressive. Man, they may be roosted in an area with some older gobblers and you're calling. That older gobbler stays on that limb waiting for hens to come into the presence. All their eyes are watching for predators. He flies down amongst hens and he's basically got a whole group scouting for him versus that two-year-old that flies off says, I'm getting to that hen before that old nasty mature gobbler gets there. I'm gonna get the date first. When you don't have a lot of two-year-olds out there, they don't come running to the call and it simply takes more tactical hunting to be a successful turkey hunter. The two-year-old birds that we did harvest this year, straight on down to the decoy. But the older, more mature birds, we held our ground even through the silence, laid off the call in most cases, and sure enough, an hour, two hours later, that old bird would come peeking around the corner, strutting but maybe not gobbling, start calling again, getting fired up, he'd come on in for the observation or the kill. Patience is the best call that money can't buy. Now, I'm a huge fan of Derby City calls, but sometimes Derby City, coupled with the patience of a maturing hunter is the recipe it takes to harvest a mature bird. Make sure you have that patience for your next turkey hunt. On those hunts where patience may be one of the best calls you have, paired with that may be calling the hens. You know, one of my favorite hunts this year is when I took my daughter Ray hunting, saw a gobbler 150 yards up on the power line, a hen went to him, it was getting late in the afternoon during the youth season. I could not get that gobbler to budge, so I started calling to the hen, assembly calls. Long, long series of yelps just really playing to the hen. Sure enough, that hen turned, led the gobbler down the hill, right to raise shotgun. That thing is gigantic. <laughs> you are the hunter, Ray. <laughs> Don't forget that calling hens can bring that gobbler right in tow and lead to a successful hunt. <laughs> when hunting and interacting with these turkey populations that are dominated by older, more mature birds and they gobble on the roost, and then they're quiet throughout most of the morning, it's really important to do a good job of scouting in those populations, either using trail cameras or spend some time out in the woods watching with your binoculars, trying to figure out where those birds want to go. Getting ahead of a mature tom, being between him and a strut area or him and a feeding area, 
where the hens want to feed can be very productive. But going out cold and walking new properties can really be troublesome in these populations that are dominated by mature birds. You know, a really important consideration is how you place your ground blind. Not where, but how. Most turkeys could care less if you put a ground blind up in the middle of a field five minutes before they get there as long as you're quiet. But if the sun is shining in the window that you're hunting out of, it reflects on your gun barrel or scope or any movement, and that can be a dead giveaway to turkeys. Get that sun behind your blind at the appropriate time of day when you anticipate hunting out of that blind. An equipment change I tried this year and was greatly pleased with was adding a turkey scope to my shotgun and my children's shotgun and switching to Winchester number fours. Now I've always been a Winchester fan, I shoot them turkey hunting, but instead of sixes I read some research this year that fours carry so much more energy and the combination of the scope replacing the old bead allowed my 80 year old dad to make a great shot at 51 yards. Now at 51 yards that bead covers up the whole turkey, not just his neck, so you can't tell exactly where you're aiming. And with the more modern shells that are really built to pattern much tighter, that aim is critical. You need to shoot your turkey gun just like a rifle when you're using this combination. And that Nikon turkey scope and the Winchester Super X shells that pattern so tight is a great combination. But if you're relying on that old bead, and the turkey's out there any distance at all, it's really tough to tell exactly where you're aiming. Got him, this combination put a lot of turkey breast in the woods freezer this year. Hey, the big one. Yeah, it dropped him right where he's at. Scope help you versus a bead, just having a bead to sight down? Uh, it was wonderful. It just put it right where you needed it. Most of y'all have seen on the news how windy with all the tornadoes and everything and how wet with all the flooding it's been in the Midwest. We're way behind by a normal calendar on spraying and preparing our food plots. But we always have to go by the weather conditions that year and not what an almanac or the map on the back of a seed bag says. We're just now heavy in the spraying. Brad's been calibrating the sprayer, spraying. We got the drill calibrated. And matter of fact, I pulled Brad off to film this from spraying and planting right now. It's May 9th and it's late in the year, but the season and the conditions have just now allowed this. So, man, Brad and I were on a tractor 8, 10, 12 hours a day. We're trying to get it done before drought comes, which is occurring in West Texas right now. It could be a real problem. I hope you learn lessons that will help you and your family in turkey hunting in future years, and I hope your food plot conditions are better at your proving ground. Thanks for watching. GrowingDeer.tv Yes! Yes! My first one! Well, I sure am glad you didn't kill that thing because I wasn't even videoing it. I was watching the hunt. It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs>